Continuing my impressions of Amouage fragrances, today's theme I could say is spice. So today I've been wearing Overture Man. I debated a little bit whether to continue posting videos on Amouage because I wouldn't call myself an Amouage expert by any means. I've tried them over the years, as I said in a previous video, the beginning of my fragrance journey, I did try um, some of the often recommended ones like Interlude and Jubilation. So I'm fairly familiar with the brand, but it still feels like they have such a huge catalog. And it's a brand of which I don't own a single bottle. So it's generally not really to my taste. I find them often a little too bold, too complex, too spicy, smoky, scratchy. If you've watched my other videos, you know my taste leans a little lighter, a little more streamlined, maybe more natural. Um, but I think it's always nice to challenge your taste and keep trying. Um, and I'd really like to get to know the House of Amouage better. So today I've been wearing Overture Man. At first spray, I actually really liked it. The biggest thing I get at the top is Boozy Note, which they list as cognac. It has like a bracing, um, almost astringent feel the way, yeah, when you smell, um, to me it's more like whiskey or even vodka the way that it, it tingles your nose but it's got a freshness from that that you can tell a freshness that doesn't come from citrus but that kind of astringent freshness that's really interesting but right under that is almost like a rubbery like tire fire smoky kind of smell um and you're starting to sense a little bit of the spices when i wore it i i hadn't looked up the notes just to see what i thought and i just thought it kept getting spicier and spicier and then I looked up that cumin is listed along with animal notes. There's definitely an animalic aspect to it. Nothing, nothing fecal or barnyardy, but something like what I've, what I've smelled as a synthetic castorium and some fragrances that list castorium, but don't use the real thing. So there's a boatload of notes of spices, ginger, saffron, a boatload of resins, myrrh, labdanum, patchouli, to me, it comes together in a very nice, smooth accord. It's hard to discern individual notes, but the cognac really sticks out as kind of being a top note for this. Unfortunately for me, as it dries down, it becomes more and more about cumin. And you're left with, for, for a long time, kind of a warm, cuminy, resinous kind of glow with a little bit of animalic, a little bit of incense, although I wouldn't call this an incense or smoky perfume. But to me, the dry down is dominated by cumin. Um, now I like spicy fragrances, the way Jean-Claude Elena uses them almost to give air to a fragrance, the way spices, you know, float around in air, they give this like pop and zing. But I almost never like spicy when it's this dry kind of sneezy spicy. And to me, this fits into that sneezy spicy category. Um, I picked this background, don't read too much into these, sometimes it's just so that you're not looking at a blank wall, but for the color palette. To me, this color palette of this Greek painting is what Overture reminds me of. Um, not so much Greek's music, but I would say Brahms music, definitely. Those dark burnished tones, dark burnished woods and spices, an old library. So it's interesting if you like spice, if you like heavy cumin, it's not BO cumin to me at all, but it's very much like you opened an old spice cabinet and got a face full of dust and cumin and spice and old woods. That's the impression I get. So Overture, interesting. Also Christopher Chong's penchant for naming things after music. Just for comparison, I thought it'd be nice to try Odermez next to it, the other cumin bomb. So next to it, this is more skin-like spice. It sticks to your skin. It melds with you, whereas this feels like it sits apart from your skin, which can imply more an actual BO. It's true. But the contrasts here are so beautiful with the bright, bright citrus up front. So I much prefer this style of light, airy spices to like a heavy, dense, sneezy, warm spice. But again, I can see how people become attracted to this warmth kind of spiciness. It's just something that's never 
appealed to me. Um, next up, I talked about King Blue, which I, I really liked, but it mentions that it has Silver Oud, and there's a, another fragrance called Silver Oud in the library collection. And I was at the store, Aedis de Venustis, which a while ago relocated to the Lower East Side, but I remember visiting their old store near West Forth because it was really convenient for me. And this was three or four days ago, still smells on the strip and you can see the big blotch. <laughs> and that day I also tried to spray on my arm and it left a big oil slick. Now in comparison, Silver Oud is much more animalic. In um, King Blue, I didn't really get anything animalic at all to speak of. Uh, just the slightest bit of like leatheriness to it, a smooth leatheriness, but to me King Blue is just pure smoothness. Silver Oud goes quite a bit animalic, um, especially again, that kind of sense of, this one actually lists castorium, but I, I'm sure it's, or I shouldn't say I'm sure, I don't know, I'm not the perfumer, but I suspect it's a castorium synthetic note. Um, this is the side of Amouage that I probably like the least. It's animalic, it's harsh, it's in your face. Um, it lists amberome, but to me, it, the, the dry down is extended for days and days and days by that kind of scratchy, woody aroma chemical smell. Um, but I did, I did recognize the through line of the oud smell in this, but for me, by a mile, I would prefer King Blue, but it depends what you like. If you like that more bold, in your face, animalic smell, maybe you prefer Silver Oud and you find King Blue a little too refined or dumbed down or made mainstream. But to me, King Blue is just so smooth and so classy and addictive. Um, whereas this one's a tough wear. Both of these, I will say, Overture and Silver, to me are in very much the same kind of ballpark, the same scent field, which makes me think, uh, not to be a heretic here, that Christopher Chong's Amouage is just really, really not for me. <laughs> um, the Amouage that I tend to like better are some of the very old ones, although I believe he was at the helm during Lyric, which I do like, and Jubilation, the Bertrand Duchefort Amouage from the kind of mid days, I guess. Um, those are nice. But the later, heavy, spicy, I've just tried so many Amouage, I feel like that end up in this scent profile that I really don't like. The new Tenure, I think you could complain that it's jumping on a few annoying um, aroma chemical trends like uh, Aki Gollywood showing up in a couple of the new fragrances. But to my taste, I've found more in the newer releases that I like than in the kind of late Christopher Chong era. Um, anyway, I'll be talking more about that in another video. On to Dia, one of the old ones. Now, for some reason, I had thought this was like a really old fragrance, like from the 50s or 60s, just in my mind, it was like Amouage's first, but I was wrong, that's gold, I guess. This is actually from, it's not that old, 2000s? Dia. 2002, and it's also a Bertrand du Chiffre. But it very much has a vintage scent profile. The beginning, it's quite modern. Actually, I wouldn't put this far away from Eau d'Hermes, but it smells more modern than Eau d'Hermes at the beginning. Yeah, it's got quite a nice, fresh opening, described as a floral, woody musk. I don't get a lot of flowers. Cardamom is mentioned. Plum, yeah, I get a kind of a fruity brightness in the beginning. But I'd say more and more as it dries down, you get more patchouli. And it dries down, yeah, already it's starting to come out to more of a vintage scent profile. Something like, I'd say this is like a very cleaned up Antaeus in a way, but that sort of 80s animalic scent profile. But something Bertrand always does is he always keeps it light. He's sort of like the king of light smokes. It's like Jean-Claude Elena's light spices and citrus. Bertrand can use incense. He can use all these heavy, dense, smoky, resinous things, but somehow keep it quite light. So this is really nice. It's a little vintage smelling in the dry down for me. I think I really liked the first hour or so, but I remember when I wore it that the, the late dry down smelled a little bit too much like a lot of kind of vintage scent profiles I smelled before that aren't, aren't my favorite. Um, 
So last one, which reminds me more of this color of the Brahms, although I'd say Brahms music maybe sounds more like these two. Total random buy just because the sample was on sale for cheap on Fragrance Net, but memoir. Yeah, this is green, smoky, ashy green and galbanum. And galvan this one I really like. Um, now, I don't know if it was the inspiration, it's just my personal comparison, but what this smells the most like is Les Abstrait de Centre. I've tried all three of his fragrances. They're fantastic. I'm a fan of Eugene and the work he's done, but this is maybe a little less bold, a little more streamlined, a little cleaner, a little, yeah, less powerful. Not, not copies in any sense, but that's the scent category. And I can't think of any other scents that I've smelled in that category. So that's really my only reference point. So yeah, like a dry smoke, green, galbanomy, a little peppery to my nose. Um, so this is Emoage Memoir Man. It's one that comes in the black bottle. I never would have assumed that this is what it smells like. Um, but this one I'm a big fan of. Again, depends how you feel about green, but green, woody, fairly dry. It lists mint, basil. I can get the basil, oak moss. Yeah, so if you like a mossy, natural, I'd say one of my favorites, uh, French Lover from Frederick Mall. It's not like that. I'd say it's the other side of like a similar prof profile. French Lover is like, um, like after the rainforest, it's fresh. It's got like a verdancy to it. It's got a wetness to it. Whereas this is like desiccated, dried up fall, um, still green, but it's like the leaves are all dry and crunchy underfoot. I think this will be beautiful in fall. So that's Memoir Man. For me, the winner out of all of these is, is that one, Amouage Memoir Man. Um, so that's my take, keeping in mind that it's not exactly my wheelhouse in terms of scent profiles. I decided to post about it anyway, thinking that maybe other people with my taste would find it helpful to see what I like and dislike to, to steer them in the right direction. Um, but anyway, especially if anyone's tried Silver Oud versus King Blue and more familiar with them, let me know what you think. But uh, so far I like King Blue quite a lot and I like Memoir Man quite a lot.